Hey, this is Joe from Personas, and today we're going to talk about how to comp vocals inside of Studio One. Uh, just recently, I was showing someone how to do comping in Studio One, and they were blown away because Studio One makes it really, really simple and easy and fast, and the way they have to do it on their system was pretty clunky and slow. Now, this isn't a new feature in Studio One, but if you've never tried it out, I'm going to show it to you today. So what is comping? It's where we do, let's say, three takes of a vocal, and then we pick and choose bits from each to compile together into what we call a comp track. I think it's short for compilation. Someone will correct me on that. But let's open up a session in Studio One. Let's record a couple takes of vocal, and then let's come back and comp those together. By the way, I'm deciding as of version six, I'm going light mode for a change. It's nice and bright and clean. By the way, you can get here by going to preferences, coming to general, appearance, crank up that luminance setting. Wha-bam! Uh, and then this contrast setting, and then also the illuminance here for the uh, arranger. And it is, it's is—it's just beautiful, and I'm really loving it. It's very light, and I really like that. So uh, without further ado, let's do some vocals. I try so hard to get through. I climb. All right, so we got a take of vocals. What do we do to get another take? Now, some people might tell you to do this. Duplicate the track, mute that one, record on another track. You don't have to do that. That's a lot of work. You don't have to do that. Press F4, which opens up the inspector. Select the track, and you'll see this layers section up here. We've got one layer. We just want to add another layer. Pops up a window that gives us the chance to rename this if we want, but it already calls it Vox2, which is super helpful. I say OK. The track is empty and waiting for me to record my next take. I've tried so hard to get through. I climb so All right, now let's do a third take. By the way, you can assign all of this to keyboard shortcuts if you want. If you're not familiar with that, just come up to the menu, find the keyboard shortcuts button here. That opens up a section inside of preferences and you can go find uh, add layer. There we go. And I can add a layer with command L apparently. Now, I don't know if that's default or if I assigned that, but you can assign that to whatever you want. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go, well, bam. It's gonna say, what do you wanna call it? Let's call it that. And let's do this one more time. I try so hard to get through I climb so high to forget you Break and bone, they bury A mind of angst and weary Okay, so we have our three vocals. <laughs> I picked the hardest song to sing on this EP because I tried to record it the other day and I couldn't. So sometimes I like to just record full takes and then punch in the spots that I want to punch in. It's a workflow thing. Sometimes it's nice to just record three takes and then piece together a better performance. Now you can have your qualms about whether or not you should do that as a singer, but that's that's your between you and your track. But um, this is how you would do that if you are using Studio One. So we now have those layers, but where'd they go? Well, they're, they're living underneath here, right? So I can switch between them, but we can only see one at a time. So how are we going to make, how are we going to comp these together? Well, the first thing we do is we add a new layer, and this is a new one that I would call, I would call this comp, okay? So that one's blank, right? And now I can switch between these layers as much as I want. So one thing I could do is I could feasibly like come to the first vocal, select that, copy it, switch to the comp layer, paste it, right? We didn't even paste it in the right spot. So that, that's the way I've had to do it on other systems. Guess what? It's not nearly that difficult. It's actually really easy. So I'm going to select the comp track and look down here on the bottom left-hand side in the arranger. You'll see these two little buttons 
They're almost hidden, but here they are. Uh, and the one we're looking for is this top one. It looks like kind of a hamburger, like a Big Mac. We click on that where it says Expand Layers. And now we're seeing all of our layers here. So we have the layer that's selected up here is the one that shows here, and that's the one that we hear, okay? Um, and then we have these other ones down here that we can also listen to. So the way that works, if we just solo the whole vocal track, if I hit play now, we shouldn't hear anything, okay? That's confirmed. Uh, and now if I were to... Um, click solo on this layer. Actually, if I were to just switch to Vox 1, we should be able to hear that first one. I tried. Okay, we can hear that. Then we can switch to 2 and 3. So that's one way that you can go about it is to kind of click through them. But the easier way is to set it up with the comp up top. And then when you press this solo button, it's, it changes what we're listening to to this take instead of the one up here. So we're listening to Vox 1, Vox 2, Vox 3. What's great about this is we don't have to, it's not soloing the track, it's just basically soloing that particular layer in that track. So I can unsolo everything, right, where I can hear the music, and I can switch between which one we're listening to by clicking this button. I try so hard to get through. Okay, so now we can go through and we can choose which ones are the best. Now, I tend to think that third one was a better take overall, so I'm going to start there. And I'm going to listen until I hear something I don't like, and then I'm going to try to find a better take somewhere else. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. But let's start by uh, doing this, listening to this first section. I try so hard to get through. All right, that's about as good as it's going to get for me on that part. So what I'm going to do is you'll notice when I'm hovering over the layers, this turns into kind of a, a different looking icon. And what this allows me to do is to select a section to jump up to the top layer. So the top layer right now is this comp layer here. So if I come down here and I say, I want you, I choose you, it'll automatically jump up to the next one. And so now I can just uh, select which one I want to listen to and we can continue down the line. So I can go from here, we can start listening. I climb so That's pretty good. Let's listen to take two. I climb so high to you. Let's do this. Let's say I want to take all of this one. So take three for most of it, but I like the high on take two. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to turn off. By the way, if you didn't know, this little button, toggle snap, it's also just the letter N on your keyboard, toggles whether or not the cursor snaps to a grid or not. You see how that's smooth? And now that's kind of snapping. Typically, for this kind of stuff, I typically want it to not be snapping to the grid. But I want the word high. I, climb so high. I like the way that one is almost kind of percussive. So I'm going to select that and plop it up there. So do you see what just happened? We've got this is take three, this is take two, this is take three. Let's actually um, color these dramatically differently. Um, I can't do that actually. Okay, never mind. Um, but you can see that this chunk, this chunk came from here, this chunk came from here, and it goes between the two. So now, if you look at this at the top comp track, you can see it actually instead instead of just copying and pasting and moving it where it needs to go, Studio One also put in the crossfade, which is this is one of the many many ways that Studio One makes me happy because it does things that I was gonna do anyway, which thereby saves me time. So we're down here listening to take two, whoops, we're listening to take two here. If we want to go listen to our comp, all we have to do is just deselect any of these solo buttons. Now we're listening to the top layer, which is this one. Let's see how that transition works. It might be a bit jarring. We may need to adjust it a little bit. I climb so high to you. The end of it's great. You couldn't hear the transition there, but this one was weird. Let's get the word so in there too. So, so. The S starts about right here, so we're just going to literally hover over this crossfade down towards the bottom, right here. See how it has a, a cursor that looks like a left to right with an X on it? That means we're moving the entire crossfade, and we're just going to slide this thing down. Now, we could also slide this down. It's the same thing. Um, so we can slide this down to catch that S. Let's see if that's right. So high. Okay. Um, I climb so high. I climb so high. Okay, and I'm going to solo the vocal here just to hear it by itself. I climb so high to forget you. 
So that's two, essentially three different performances layered on top of one another. Uh, and how quickly, like if I wasn't sitting here flapping my gums here explaining everything to you, I would do this really, really quickly, which is what I'm going to do for this second half. I'm going to be quiet and we're just going to comp the second half of this vocal. I so high to you. Now some of this, it's 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 a you could do a whole like masterclass on comping, like as far as making the comping decisions. Um, but for me, that feels about right. And let's listen to the whole comped together vocal now, or at least that second half that we just comped here. That of angst part it could maybe be better if it was this one. Maybe the first one? No, I didn't like that one. Let's try this one instead. Let's just make that it. Cool. So this is all one piece now, so we can actually just delete that last part and just drag out the whole thing. And then there was a little bit of a spot here that sounded a little, there's a little like pop in the audio. Probably just means we picked the wrong spot to crossfade. So let's just move it down a little bit, see how that sounds. Here we go. Oh yeah, that works. Now you may be wondering, Joe, why did you record without headphones, just so I could show this to you uh, quickly, um, rather than having to throw headphones around. So yes, you can hear bleed from my speakers in the mic. But actually, I've done this before where I've just recorded a vocal with the speakers blasting, and it's actually not that bad, especially if you use something like my poor beat up PD-70, which I'm actually using on this record, which is very cool. All right, so that is it for uh, how to comp vocals in Studio One. It's literally that simple. So now when you're done, you can unhide these or you can hide those layers so you're just seeing your main layer. And now this is what you work from. And if you want to be extra fancy, here's the last step that I would do on this. I'll duplicate this layer and I'll call this consolidated, which is just way too long. But now I've got five layers. The first three are my takes. This is my comp track and this is a consolidated track. What does that mean? It means I'm going to take all of this and I'm going to hit command B to bounce it all down into one piece of audio. I don't always do that, but this makes it easier. A, it looks a little cleaner on the screen, which is nice. Uh, B, it makes it easier to do Melodyne because now I can have this whole thing selected and I can hit Command M and up pops Melodyne ready for me to get in there and do any tuning. <laughs> Not that I need to do any tuning, um, but that works a lot better than if I were to do Melodyne on individual like this, it actually shows up as like one, two, three, four, five, five, six different instances of Melodyne that are on each individual event. So you have to go back and reselect each event. It's just not quite as, you have to have them all selected to see them all show up in the Melodyne window. So I prefer to just have a consolidated one, but I like to keep the unconsolidated one in case I find a mistake and want to go back and fix that. Or I change my mind on one of the comp decisions. I can always go back and redo the comp and I can just do a new consolidated version of that moving forward. All right, that is it for comping in Studio One. If you've never tried it, just go experiment with it. It works the same way for guitars. You can do this for entire drum performances. Um, you just have to make sure you group everything together, put it all in a folder, and click this little button right there. Looks like a, a group. Um, then do all of this, and the, the layers will all follow for every track inside the group. Uh, but yeah, it's a very handy feature. It's good to know because there are some workflows where you just need to do takes and comping. And it's good to know how to do this and how to be fast at it so you can stick and stay kind of stay in the music and stay in the mood of the song without taking a ton of time to switch a bunch of stuff around. Thanks for watching so much. I'll see you in the next one.